the birthplace of Western civilization, the origin of democracy, philosophy, and Western thinking. We had been looking forward to visiting Greece for months, but the start of our trip took a turn for the worse. Leaving New York, we were delayed idling on the tarmac for two hours. By the time we arrived in Paris, we had missed our connector and lost our luggage. The mix-up had cost us another day of travel in exchange for the comforts of Charles de Gaulle. Okay, well, that was probably the worst travel experience we have ever had. I mean, it's not uncommon for you to get delayed on the tarmac, but we were delayed for two hours, and with an hour and a half connection, there was no way that we were gonna make the connection at Charles de Gaulle. And lo and behold, we were hanging out there for about seven hours. Uh, finally caught a second flight, and after 24 hours, we landed in Athens, but you know what, it was 1 a.m. in the morning by the time we finally got in. And now we have four hours to sleep, and we have only 24 hours left to explore the city, so let's go. Here we go. With only 24 hours to spare, we headed straight for the pinnacle of the city, the Acropolis. Just a short walk through the busy city center and up the hillside, and we were surrounded by structures dating back to the 5th century BC. Athens behind us, we headed west onto the Peloponnesian Peninsula to visit Greece's original capital city of Naflio. We arrived that evening and settled for the night in an apartment run by a local pharmacist in town. It was a nice change of pace from the prior two days of travel. That evening, we slept easy and awoke to the refreshing sights of Naflio. For starters, we explored the Old Town Center. As we walk the city from its alleyways to the waterfront, a single landmark stood alone, Palamede Fortress, asserting itself over the city as a reminder of the importance Naflio held in history. To scale the fortress, we had to climb 913 breathless steps up the cliffside, but with our gradual change in elevation, the scenery went from special to the spectacular.
terra firma, we spent our last daylight hours wandering Naflio's waterfront. As the sun fell, the shadows of Palamedi grew, slowly engulfing the city into a dark and peaceful slumber. The next day, we had something different on the schedule. No Greek holiday is complete without a visit to an island, and we had plans to visit Hydra. Just a short trip from Naflio or Athens, Hydra is easily accessible via ferry and offers much of the island vibes many look for. I will get close to your heartache If you want to open your door mm. I'm feeling kind of lost when you're Whatever that is choking your chest I can see it in your eyes that you're shaking Cause you're holding it back mm-hmm. Maybe you'll make up your mind Now I'm here by your side So let it all Our journey took us north. We were leaving the Peloponnesian Peninsula and heading into the Greek heartland towards our final destination, Meteora. Along the way, we decided to make a side trip to one of ancient Greece's most historic sites, Delphi. We're on our way to Delphi, and just to give you an idea of how empty it is, we stopped at a place just outside of Delphi for lunch, and look, there's no one. So March is definitely a good month to come. Well, it was almost perfect. See, we like to travel in the off season to avoid the crowds, but sometimes that means compromise. When we arrived in Delphi, we had discovered that the amphitheater was closed for restoration. But we didn't let that spoil our mood. Being perched on the green mountains with millennial old stone dotting the horizon, you can't help but soak in the majesty of ancient Greece.
from Delphi, we continued our trek further north and arrived in Kalambaka, the main town in Meteora. Despite the ambitious itinerary, we arrived with enough time to settle out on our porch and watch the night fall over the city. Our last stop was an ode to the mystical. Meteora offers some of the most dazzling and unique views in the country. These monasteries were built into the rock formations by monks as a way to protect themselves from the turmoil below. Isolated from the secular world, their perched position allowed the monks to practice in solitude for generations. Today, only six of the original 24 monasteries remain. They are connected via a circuitous highway and are open for visitors to explore. 